Right, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Now, obviously we are joined with Smarty today at Loop Farm, or otherwise known as Valley View Equestrian. And we're gonna be doing a full video today on road safety with horses and why you should pay more attention, be safe on the road and have some respect. But guys, we're gonna join you after the intro. I'm gonna give some more of this disgusting smelling horse licks to this lovely specimen and we'll join you very, very shortly. Welcome to Loop Farm, Valley View Equestrian, Litchit Dorset. Today we're going to have a look at horses, how you can stay safe on the road when passing horses, potentially what could go wrong, and how everyone can work together on the roads to make it as safe as possible for all. Before Smarty begins to uh, eat my fingers, um, should we tell them who we are, Heidi? I think we ought to. Carry okay. on. Uh, Alan Hiscox from the British Horse Society Safety Team, and I'm here to tell you about the Dead Slow campaign, how we keep riders, drivers and horses safe on the roads. Thanks Alan, my name's Heidi, I'm a police officer, road casualty reduction officer for Dorset. I'm involved in all things road safety just to try and save some lives. Right guys, I grew up in North London, the only horse I ever saw was on the telly, so I know nothing about horses, but it's actually quite interesting, although it's really, really cold here today, it's quite interesting to find out about the horses, so let's go and have a chat with Beth and find out a little bit more about Smarty, come on. Hiya. I see you're getting smarty ready. Yeah, putting our kit on. Yeah, so she is a 16.3 um, Irish sports horse. What's 16.3? So that's just her height. So she is 16 hands from the ground, 0.3. What, like my size hands? Yeah, so about that. Treat me like an idiot because I know <laughs> nothing about horses at all. So she's, yeah, no, she's lovely. She's a gentle giant. I wouldn't trade her for the world. She's very sweet, very lovely. Yeah, so she's 14 years old. Uh, she'll be 15 later in the summer. She's a really gentle giant. Uh, she's a coloured horse, which means that she's brown and white and black. So in the winter, she's more black and white. In the summer, she's more brown and white. It just depends on the coat change, the seasons. What, so she actually changes colour? Yeah, so uh -huh. her white bits will stay white, but this bit, you can see she's black face, ginger nose. In the summer, she'll get a black nose and kind of a browner face. Right. Um, which I think is just really cute. What sort of riding does she do? Oh, or what do you do with her? So I try and do eventing with her. But we just kind of have a go at everything, just see what's fun, eventing? just whatever she enjoys. What's eventing? Um, eventing is like a combination of three different disciplines. So you've got the dressage, which is like they're going around in circles doing fancy footwork. The show jumping, which is jumping over poles, like varying heights depending on what height you want to do. And then the cross country, that's our favourite bit. That is galloping over fields and jumping over fences and things. And that's the bit that we most enjoy. That's what she's best at. Has anything happened to you on the road that's kind of scared you? Um, yeah, when I was very little, when I had my first pony, Jimmy, he's a tiny little 11 hands high thing, it's about that big. Um, we were just riding out on the road with a friend um, we had all our equipment on, everything, we were all safe, but this um, kind of van came past with a little trailer on the back, yeah. really fast, and this trailer was rattling, spooked Jimmy, so scared him. He bolted off, he bolted off up the road and just ditched me in the grass. Yeah. So that was quite scary, and that did scare me for a little bit, but now Smarty's lovely and gentle, so... And Smarty's quite good on the road, she is she? She is quite good, but even the most well-trained horse can spook at a bird. Yeah. So... And what happens when they spook? What, what's so, likely to happen? Um, when they spook, uh, their fight or flight response kind of kicks in. So fight or flight, they'll fight it if they can, but horses are more prey animals, so they're more likely to just run away. Hmm. So if they see a bird come out the hedge, they don't know what that is. That could be a predator, so they'll probably turn on their heels and run. Right. If you have a car coming past really fast at the same time and they spook at a bird, they'll spook onto your windscreen. And she weighs half a tonne, so... She's going to do some damage. She'll probably crush you. So, Alan, I'm actually curious because I certainly want to know how to get through to the people that, you know, watch my content, but at the same time, how to get through to the people that watch yours. And then also, again, with the police, um, you know, Facebook pages as well. But, you know, we've, got, we've obviously got horse and road safety is, I suppose, the topic. But how can we make a point in the right way? Get people to listen. Do you have anything to offer? Well, yeah, we, we want to reach... Um, young drivers and drivers of, of all ages really yeah, yeah. just try and get them to understand when they pass horses mm -hmm. how to do it safely yeah, for sure. um, and we've got to make it um, interesting but also mm -hmm. something that they, they're going to remember because there's, there's so many aspects to it yeah, yeah, yeah. that 
they see a horse on the road and it might be a, a, a nurse that's on the uh, on the horse or a doctor and how they can pass the horse safely mm. so save an injury to them and also to the rider and to the horse it's exciting that finally someone from outside the horse community actually wants to get involved with helping people stay safe on the roads I don't sound thrilled about it, but I promise I am. So just before we go out on the road, I just want to have a little chat about Op Snap. Now, Beth's wearing uh, a GoPro, um, and horse riders will wear GoPros, cyclists use GoPros, and most horses will have Op Snap. What Op Snap does is it allows you to submit your footage of incidents that happen on the road, and then we can assess them, see whether they're suitable for forwarding for prosecution. Um, and we can deal with things that way. Um, and it's been really, really successful. So please, if something does happen to you on the road um, or your dash cam captures footage and you think, oh, blimey, I wish the police could deal with that, then please go on to your local force website, look for OpSnap, and then you can submit that footage to us and we can look at it for you. So I'm coming around the corner now and in front of me, I can see the horse. So I'm approaching the horse nice and slowly, and what I'm waiting for is for the horse to acknowledge my presence here. Clearly there's not enough space for me to be able to pass the horse. I can't give it that two metre distance. Look how I'm pulling him. Look how steady, sturdy. So all I'm going to do now is approach the horse really, really slowly. I'm still going to come as wide as I can. No, 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 no. No. And there we go. That's why I go as wide as I can, because even though I went past really, really slowly then, the horse still came out. The horse was still startled by the presence of the vehicle. If I'd have gone any closer, the horse would have come into the car and potentially caused damage. So that was a really, really good way of showing just how easily the horse can be startled and why you give the horse so much space and go past so slowly um, to avoid that happening. And if it does happen like it did there, um, we were able to deal with that because I'd given it that time and that space. Okay, so we're approaching another horse now. Um, and what I want you to remember is the four principles of passing the horse, okay? So slow down to a maximum of 15 mile an hour. Don't rev your engine or sound your horn. Pass nice and widely and slowly. And number four is don't speed away after you've passed the vehicle because that can cause it to spook. Now, what we're gonna try and demonstrate here is how the, the horse can possibly spook if you speed away afterwards. Now, we've got a very experienced rider here um, and a horse that's very, very good. And I'm just gonna show you how I go past. And, you know, we've done the 15 mile an hour. We're passing nice, widely and slowly. And as we go past the horse, we're just going to speed away a bit. And that's what can happen. You can see that the horse has now spooked a little bit. It's over the road um, and that's a danger to both the horse and the rider. And that's just caused by me accelerating away a little bit more harshly than I needed to. So please remember those four principles when you're passing horses. It's bitterly cold outside, so we've come inside here to Kingston Moorwood Equestrian. Now, in the last clip, we looked at passing a horse safely on the road, and we did two drive-bys to try and demonstrate how to safely pass a horse using the four-step approach. Now, in the first clip, we did just a drive-by, and you saw how the horse was so easily spooked, even though the car was that far away and as far away as we could get from it. If we'd have been any closer, then it could have caused damage to our car. In the second clip, we just demonstrated how just accelerating away a little bit too quickly caused the horse to spook again. So you can see just how easily the horses can be spooked on the road. Now, please remember that not every horse that you see on the road is going to be lit up like a Christmas tree in yellow and orange and pink. Um, some of them don't have any of that fluorescent on at all. And you've just faced with a brown horse or a black horse, so they're not going to stand out quite as easily. So just remember that when you're on the road. Right, Beth, George and I were talking off camera <laughs> and we were wondering about how much it costs to, to run a horse. We spend loads of money on our cars every month. How much a month does it cost to run a horse? Mm, roughly, I think £400 a month. £400 a month? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so that's for right. like her feed, her bedding, her shoes, yeah. all of that stuff. So it's expensive. Yeah, it all adds up. <laughs> and do you have to have insurance? I do, I have insurance with um, BHS Gold. Okay, so and that, does that cover you for public liability when yeah, you're out on the road? Yeah, public liability, all of that stuff. 
very right. good. Excellent. So how mm -hmm. much would it cost to actually buy the horse? I think everyone would probably want to know that. So the price of a horse depends on kind of their ability. So very top level horses you're looking at, well, in the hundred thousands. We were really lucky with her. She wasn't too bad. But if I was to sell her now, which I wouldn't, I'd probably ask for about eight grand. About eight grand. Yeah. Right. So not cheap hobby, is it? No. Yeah. How many <laughs> no. jobs you got, Beth? I work two jobs just to pay for her, and every penny I earn goes on her. I mean. You don't get much horsepower for money then, do you, Beth? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <up>. <laughs> Right, Alan, I did have a little bit of a brainwave last night and it came to me, or at least the realisation came to me, that a lot of the people watching this video have probably forgotten that horses really were the epitome of cool. Back in the day, all of the wars, the only way you got there was on a horse. So, yeah. I mean, speak to us about that, because I think a lot of people probably just see the dressage, they see the show jumping, and they probably forget just how important it was to... English culture, I guess, is that everything was built on a horse. That's right. I mean, the whole history of this country is built on the back of a horse. Warfare, transport, agriculture, and that mm. whole term, horsepower, is actually back to the Industrial Revolution. There's these newfangled machines, and they want to compare the power to it, compare it with a horse. So they got this equation that this new machine, this new steam-powered machine, was so many horsepower. And that's where we come into the whole um, horsepower equation. That's probably a good cut in for me because I'm sure they would like to know as well. Please explain to us about horsepower because I know that when we think about our modified cars, guys, is we think of, you know, this car's got 80 horsepower, this car's got 100 horsepower more than that car. What does that actually mean? Does it really mean you've got that many more horses, for example? No, it doesn't actually mean that 360 horsepower, brake horsepower, means the equivalent to 360 horses. There's a different equation for that, but it mm. all dates back to how much power these steam engines could equate to horses pulling a certain amount of material over a certain mm. distance. So that's where the link is, and the real horsepower, the horses, compared with the horsepower, the cars, you know, there is that, that, that whole... Um, jointed up and in fact the mechanical engineers their coat of arms still has a horse on so it's still very important the real horsepower and the relationship they've got with the brake horsepower in cars yeah i think a lot of people probably do jump the gun and assume that you know the term horsepower means they've got the equivalent of that much horse power in their engine and obviously that's not the case no, it's I, a little bit more complicated than that yeah, but bear in mind that horses are very powerful animals there's mm. no doubt about that oh for sure um, and you know you, you can see them still in agriculture in the amount of um, sort of tonnage that they can pull so alan it wouldn't actually surprise me if smarty or at least that horse over there could run faster than half the tin cans that turn up to the car meets i attend oh uh, yeah horses <laughs> really powerful yeah, yeah and yeah. can go very quickly look at racehorses so yeah sure. there, there is that relationship and that's what we want to try and get mm. that relationship on the roads a respect for each other that mutual level of respect because yeah. i think in anything there's always going to be bad people and good people in the scene there's people that disrespect the car scene there's people that respect the car scene there's also people that disrespect the horse community and people that don't and i think it's just bringing that network together getting everyone involved all on the same wavelength so that we can all work together and share the roads i mean i'm not saying yeah. that you're going to get a horse on the dual carriageway Obviously not, but when there is a horse passing from, say, one field to the other, yeah. there is obviously due reason behind it. Absolutely. And I think it's just getting you guys on board with, it's completely normal to see a horse, but more importantly, look out for a horse. And I guess, having watched our video, this is what you do when you see one. Yeah, we're not there to slow you down. Mm. We're just trying to get from one bridal way to another bridal way, or a stable to a bridal way. So yeah, yeah that respect is exactly the message. <laughs> right, thank you everyone for reaching the end of today's video. You've been fantastic as ever, and I hope you've learned something today, something new, I certainly have. Uh, and before we finish today, I want to introduce you to H. You met her at the start of the video. Now, H, I'm sure she won't mind me telling you, but she's retiring, um, and she's come back on her annual leave before she retires to do this video today, because she's got a special interest in horses. So, H, what did you want to say before the end of the video? Thanks very much, Owen. Well, you, some of you may have seen these in and around Dorset. Uh, we worked with BHS to try and bring this to Dorset under our Close Pass Horse Safe campaign. And as you can see, it's all about giving space, being safe on the road, but reminding people that it's not just about the motorist, it's about the horse rider as well, making sure that they are properly equipped, that they're seen, and that they follow the rules of the road just as the motorist will. So yeah, it's all about making that relationship work and being safe out there. And just remember, the next time you pass a cyclist on the road, it could be a policeman looking at your, your driving. So who knows? 
Thank you, H. Right, and a few thank yous before we finish the video. Thank you to Kingston Moorwood Equestrian here that have lent us this facility for today. And thank you to Loop Farm and Valley View Equestrian where we started the whole video at. Um, also, obviously, thank you to Beth and to Smarty. You've been fantastic. You've been really great and <laughs> given us some really fantastic footage. Don't forget Francis, the videographer. And Francis. Oh, and yeah, Francis. sorry. Yeah, Francis <laughs> uh, helped us on day one. Um, and, well, I suppose we've got to say thank you to George as well, but not that yeah. he's done an awful lot. We we'll don't have to work with me anymore, George. <laughs> <laughs> well, I like your sandwiches. <laughs> Right, thank you everyone, and hopefully we'll see you next time. H, as you're retiring, I think it's time you did it. What do I do?